you're all well. Today we're going to be doing a mid-month wrap-up. It looks like I'm getting back to in, back to my mid-month wrap-ups finally. So I'm hoping to try and get through this as quick as I possibly can. I've got 12 books to go through with you and this is for the 1st through till the 15th of September. So um, yeah, there'll be some shocks in here I think a little bit because I was certainly shocked um but very excited to tell you about these books so let's get through them because I'm rapidly losing daylight and I want to get this recorded as quickly as I possibly can so the first book is Josh and Hazel's Guide to Not Dating by Christina Lauren I really enjoyed this I think it might be one of my favorite Christina Lauren books that I've ever read from them I really enjoyed um, twice in a blue moon but this one I really did enjoy so this was following Josh and Hazel basically Hazel's best friend is Josh's sister S but she didn't know that when they were younger she's known Josh for a really long time because of uni I think they were at uni together and they met up at a party one time and she threw up in his shoe or something <laughs> she was smashed clearly Hazel is eccentric she's just batshit crazy she's no filter she just says exactly what she's thinking and she's great in that way like she's on all the time she's 100 percent all the time and i just love her i think her personality traits are fantastic and i would love for her to be my best friend i just think she's like amazing i just love her so much so basically josh's girlfriend josh finds out something about his girlfriend and they split up and then josh and hazel they started hanging out after meeting at one of um josh's sister's parties or something so they start hanging out and then they find out about what's happened with josh's girlfriend and then slowly but surely they start to go on double dates but not with each other with other people so josh will set hazel up with somebody and hazel will set josh up with somebody and over the course of the rest of this book you get to a point where these two characters you've already already figured it out obviously i mean the title says it all but you figured it out that these two characters should not be dating other people they should be dating each other and slowly but surely they come to this realization and i just really enjoyed it it was smutty it was funny as hell it was cute it was romantic i just really really enjoyed it there was a lot of stuff going on in here and i had a really good time the writing style was great and i just really really enjoyed it, it was hilarious so i gave this five out of five stars so good highly recommend and it's not even that long either so go check it out it's really good then i read zombirella um this is by joseph colho i think that's how you pronounce that and it's illustrated by freya hartas and this is fairy tales gone bad volume one i think there's going to be three of these this came in as an arc from netgalley so thank you to them and the publishers for providing me with a copy of this this is basically like um it's cinderella it's a retelling basically it is fairy tales gone bad it's exactly what it says on the tin <laughs> um so this is cinderella and when she is so everybody knows the story of cinderella she's got three stepsisters she's got a stepmother and her dad has passed so they're evil to her and they go to the ball basically the prince there's a side story with the prince as well he is not as it all seems in this one but the prince comes in to this town and he's going to have three days of balls so three balls one back to back and then he'll leave town he doesn't actually he's not the prince of the town he just goes to different towns and have balls there's there's reasons for it though so you will find out if you want to read the book and um basically she when the sisters have all gone she's in the hope that she might get hold of a fairy godmother or something and be able to go to the ball and she falls down the stairs and dies <laughs> it's all very dramatic she falls down the stairs and dies and instead of a fairy godmother coming visiting her it's death and they allow her to be resurrected every evening so that she can go to the ball um so she's obviously a zombie hence zombirella so she goes to the ball each night the mother and the, ste the stepmother and the stepsisters don't realize because they're staying at the castle so they don't know that she's dead so she goes to the ball every night and they she's obviously fallen in love with the prince the prince has fallen in love with her but the stepsisters are still mean to her they don't realize it's her and they she's just like 
it's just strange like the illustrations are fantastic i just thought the illustrations were really really good the story itself is entertaining i had a really good time with it i thought it was funny but it's middle grade and i'm just not sure how funny kids will find this because it is sort of a little bit off in the sense that she will say to one of the mean stepsisters like you said i had no brain but what is this and pull her brain out of her mouth and hold it in her hand and she did the same thing with her guts as well and it was just a little bit i found it funny but i just don't know how funny kids will find it like up to a certain age i don't think they'll find it funny they might be a little bit terrified i'm not sure so i don't know what the full age range is on this but it was good i had a good time with it it was fine i gave it four out of five stars i had a nice time with it then I read The Wicker King by Kay Ancrum, if you've seen my reading vlog for this, which was week one of Bookopolathon reading vlog. I, this is my favourite book of the year. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Um, this is incredible. This is following two boys, August and Jack. Let me just double check that because I've read a book this month with author, Arthur, yes, August and Jack, who are best friends, they've been best friends since they were kids, but they go in, they sort of, they're attached to different circles, so Jack's a bit of a jock, he plays sports and things like that, August is a bit of a nerd, quiet boy, but he, he sells drugs, and he's selling drugs because his mum has uh, depression, and she doesn't do much of anything, to be perfectly honest, she just sits and watch, watches TV all day, so they have some income coming in from her disability, but other than that, they've no money coming in, so August is selling drugs, and then Jack is starting to have hallucinations and it's affecting August as well because as his best friend Jack's asked that they don't seek professional help they'll be able to work the way through it themselves so August is trying to help his best friend through this and it's affecting both of them obviously so this is the story of them trying to work their way through this and this is very very hard hitting and there's a lot going on in here these two boys are obviously they're only 17 and they're obviously being very very neglected by the parents by the the teachers at school there are a lot of adults in their lives where at any one point in time a, an adult could have stepped in to help them out but nobody did um so a lot going on in here and as you get further into the book i don't know if you can see this but as you get further into jack's hallucinations the pages get darker and darker until you're at a point where oh that's not the right page clearly so you're at a point where the pages are black and the writing is white so you start off with a white page and black writing and slowly but surely you get into jack's hallucinations worse and worse and i just this book killed me essentially i cried and cried and cried at the end and then i read the author's note and cried and cried and cried some more the author's note is incredible and i gave this five out of five stars and it's my favorite book of the year go and check it out i am obsessed with this book i highly recommend it um then i read nick and charlie by alice oseman this is a short novella following nick and charlie from the heartstopper series so if you've been reading that series you'll know about Nick and Charlie, but this is following on from Solitaire. So in Solitaire, Nick and Charlie have been a couple for a few years, and this is following on from Solitaire. So it doesn't follow on from Heartstopper Volume 3, it follows on from Solitaire. So just be aware of that going into it. But um, essentially, Nick and Charlie are two boys who are dating, and this just follows them with... Um, charlie is is it charlie that's a year older or nick that's a year older let me just double check i can never remember which way around yeah so nick's a year older and he's about to go away to college and obviously he's very very excited he cannot wait but charlie's like really grumpy about the whole situation and this is them going through the motions of the fact that nick's going to be leaving charlie for uni and not leaving him in the sense that the relationship's over but it kind of takes it goes down that road so this was cute and i loved it it's got illustrations in it and um texts and things like that it's a really easy read but very very cute and i highly recommend picking it up i gave it four out of five stars then i read a memory in the flame by jesse elliott and kj so and this is the third in the Charlie travesty series which is following Charlie travesty who is a vampire princess and it's following her through the process of no longer being a vampire princess because of something that happens. That's all I'm allowed to tell you on the sole basis that each of these are novellas. And if I tell you any more, then that's going to spoil it. So I read the third one. I gave it four out of five stars and I've really, really enjoyed it. It's a great time. I highly recommend picking these ones up. Like I say, they are novellas and they are all on Kindle Unlimited at the moment. So if you want 
a very fast paced vampire book with a little bit of smut in it I would, I would recommend picking this series up it's so so good next i read six of crows by lee bardugo and i really enjoyed this this is following a group of dregs so i think there's six of them the main person is kaz brecker and the other characters are inej um nina mateus jesper and wylan and i really enjoyed this this is following them trying to break into a high security prison and they're trying to break somebody out and it was a really good time very adventurous it took me a while to get into it but i think after about the 150 page mark i was really invested and really into it i really enjoy I think I'm going to enjoy this duology because the next one is Crooked Kingdom. I was buddy reading this with Siobhan. And I think I'm going to enjoy this du duology more than the Grishaverse trilogy, which is the Shadow and Bone trilogy. So I gave this four out of five stars. Really enjoyed it. Highly anticipating Crooked Kingdom being higher than a four. Maybe a 4.5, possibly a five. We'll see. But I'm highly anticipating it. Cannot wait to continue with the series. Very excited indeed. Then I read A Sacrifice in the Smoke by KJ Sutton and Jesse L. This is the fourth in the Charlie Travesty series, so again, can't tell you anymore. But I gave this one four stars as well. It's very good. Highly recommend picking it up. Left you on a cliffhanger that I wasn't expecting. Pick it up. Pick the series up. It's so good. Then I read The Wicked Deep by Shea Earnshaw. This was an unexpected pickup. Actually, my friend Anna, we used to buddy read all the time. And then we just stopped because we got to the end of the series. We were buddy reading, which was The Lunar Chronicles. And we've missed buddy reading, really. So she was like, have you got any books that you might fancy picking up? Um, so we picked The Wicked Deep. And I got through this in about three or four days, I think it was. And this was really good. I wasn't expecting to like it as much as i did but once i got about 150 pages in i wasn't expecting to rate it as low as i did if that makes any sense so this is following a girl called penny she lives in a town a very small town but she lives on an island off the town because her and her parents essentially sort of sought out the lighthouse for this town her dad disappeared three years prior to where we join in with this and her mum has been in sort of like a depressive state ever since then. She just sort of goes to stand out on the um, ledge and see if she can see her husband coming back. There was no signs of him disappearing or anything. His boat was still on the shore and his stuff was still at home and stuff. He's just literally disappeared off the face of the earth. Now, Penny lives in a town in which every year around the summer solstice, three girls who were drowned in the ocean surrounding this town 200 years prior come back and take the lives of three boys every single year they do this and um up until around about the halfway point you don't know if this is just a story and it's just a coincidence that boys keep dying or whether it's actually a real thing but um it's very very good I would I think there's there's just a problematic thing in this in in uh, as far as sexual consent's concerned um I don't want to spoil it too much I won't tell you exactly why that is a thing but if you get to the end of the book or you've read this before you'll know exactly what I'm talking about but there is an issue relatively problematic as far as the sexual consent is concerned but other than that, I thought it was good. It was very predictable. I, there were two things that happened in this that I predicted at the beginning, towards the beginning of the book, and I, they happened. <laughs> so it was predictable in that sense. But otherwise, I really enjoyed Shea Earnshaw's writing. I can't wait to pick up Winterwood. And I did have a good time with it. I gave it three out of five stars. It was fine. I just had a great time with it. It was very fast paced. So I do recommend picking it up. But problematic on the sexual consent side of things um then i read return to raw by jenny mclachlan i gave this four out of five stars this is the second in the land of raw series there is going to be a third i don't know if there's any more than that but from the back page i can tell you there's going to be a third <laughs> i had a really good time with this this follows two twins called rose and arthur who in the first book they have like this fantasy world when they were kids when they were a lot younger they're like 
11 or 12 now when they were a lot younger they had this fantasy world called raw where they thought it was just a game that they were playing in the granddad's attic where they you know like rose had like a dragon and arthur had this best best friend called win who's like a really terrible magician and there was this bad guy and things like that and they thought it was all in their head and it was just a game that they used to play it turns out in the first book they go through this folded up bed that you can't open it because if you open it the land of raw will disappear so obviously don't open the bed well they go through the folds in the bed and they end up in raw it turns out it's a real place um but it has all sort of been caused of being a real place from the figments of the imaginations of author or author arthur and rose so i had a really good time with it so that's what happened in the first one in the second one they've obviously gone back to raw so it's really really good they there is a bad guy who's like hunting them down let me see if i can find a picture of the bad guy he he's creepy man he really freaks me out i mean i'm scared of scarecrows so maybe that's why he freaks me out a little bit because he looks a bit like a scarecrow. He's all croaky and he freaks me out. Look at him. Tell me that's not terrifying as a child. Um, yeah, he gives me the heebie-jeebies. So, yeah, I gave Return to Raw 4 out of 5 stars. It was really good. Then I read The City We Became by N.K. Jemison. I loved this book. I think this book is like my third favourite book of the year. It was fantastic. This is uh, a very difficult to explain basically this is following we're following five different people who were actually following a few more than that but we're following five different people mainly who are the five boroughs of new york city so we've got staten island queens brooklyn bronx and manhattan and then there is another one who is going to be like as a whole new york and these five boroughs have to fight they need to join up basically to fight against an entity that is trying to infiltrate New York City. So they want to bring their world down into New York City and they're trying to infiltrate the city. And as it turns out, they've been trying to do this in other places as well. Um, it's just that other people have been fighting against them. And now they've got to try and get the five boroughs of New York City to come together and fight off this entity and basically that's what's going on in here it's very cleverly done there are a lot of different um there's a lot of different subjects going on in this i would say subjects a lot of different matters going on in this racism homophobia um sexism bigotry just so much going on in here there are trigger warnings in here for all of those things as well but i freaking love this book so much it was so good i love new york city as a whole like in general so it really works out for me that i could relate to all of the things that they were mentioning about new york city everything i don't can you see the little thing this cover's interactive if you check out my latest vlog that's just gone up a couple of th on week two i've done like a little thing in there of it but um yeah i will i gush about this book in there probably more than i will do here because i've gone on about it so much already but if you want to know my full ins and outs thoughts of that do check out that vlog because i do go on about it in there i have tabbed this up as well loads of tabs i just love this so so much it was amazing i had the best time with this it's definitely something i feel like even in a month's time i could pick back up again i feel like i could pick it up today to be honest but i had an amazing time with this i gave this five out of five stars it was so good then i just needed a bit of a buffer i was having a really bad day the other day and i picked up dreaming sun volume one by ichi Takano. this is the author that did the orange manga series if you've seen that series flitting about i had i've read this last year i think it was but i know becca's read it as well um so i picked up dreaming sun i just really needed something to break my time up a little bit so i picked this up this is a manga it's following a young girl called shimana and she wants to run away from home because she thinks that her dad doesn't love her anymore her mum passed several years earlier and her dad's remarried and they've had a baby together and her, she just doesn't think her dad's bothered about her anymore so she tries to run away from home and ends up falling over a man a drunk man in the park who offers to help her out in exchange for three things so he just wants three things from her and she she can stay at his place basically it's not as creepy as it sounds i was like holy shit there is 
voice this is like relatively creepy i mean it's semi-problematic to be fair but um as you get further into it, it gets less and less creepy and it's quite entertaining so it was fine it broke up the monotony a little bit of lots of fantasy and stuff and like really big books so i gave this three out of five stars it was fine and then the final book that i read in this first half of the month was if i never met you by vahiram farlane this is my contemporary book club's pick for the month of september and this was good this is following laurie who has been with her other half dan for 18 years they never got married but they live together and they're in the process of coming off the pill so that they can have a baby together until one day she gets in from a night out and dan tells her he doesn't want to be with her anymore just completely random off the cuff takes her out completely he doesn't want to be with her anymore he doesn't want a baby he doesn't want all this he doesn't want to settle down and all this lot he's been with her since he was 18 years old and he wants to go and find himself blah 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 so they split up and within two months he is seeing another well yeah within two months he's seen another woman and she's pregnant so quite clearly laurie is fucking fuming she's furious and she's devastated as well she ends up she doesn't come up with the idea but she ends up being stuck in a lift with one of the guys from work called jamie who is like a player and he's got a reputation for himself of just taking women out for drinks and sleeping with them and that being it he ne he's never in a relationship he doesn't believe in them he doesn't believe in marriage and all of this lot he doesn't want to settle down he's quite happy just being a bachelor if you like so they end up getting stuck in a lift one day then they go out for a drink because he's missed his date because they've been stuck in a lift for two hours so they go out for a drink and he comes up with this great idea of fake dating because he wants to try and get partner at the law firm that they work at so he wants to try and get partner she wants to get back at dan so they come up with this idea of fake dating she's totally on board with it and that's this is what they decide to do and all they want to all they bother about doing is going out for a few days staging some pictures keeping this going up until the christmas do and then after the christmas do partner is decided and then they can split up and that's that it'll piss dan off he'll hopefully get partnership and that's what happens and it just goes from there the only thing i will say about this i gave it four out of five stars i think it would have been a five out of five stars for me if it hadn't felt a little bit childish at times i felt like on occasion i was reading a ya rather than an adult book it just kind of slipped very only a couple of times but it slipped into like ya childish reactions or arguments or whatever and i just felt like it was just the quickest slip and then it came back to being an adult book again and i just wasn't a big fan of it but overall i really enjoyed the book i related to this a lot again i have tabbed the book up there are a lot of things in this that i related to laurie's 36 years old jamie's 31 and there was a lot i related to not feeling like you're good enough for somebody wondering what it is that you've done wrong why you aren't good enough why that other person is better than you are trying to figure out all these different things in your head whilst also trying to get over a breakup so um but also the friendship side of things in this as well i just loved laurie's best friend she was a hoot i think she was called eve but she was just an absolute hoot and i just think that jamie's parents as well were fantastic i just had a really really good time with this it was so good also um laurie our main character she is black she has a black mother a white father and she it's going through a lot of the um racial things in here as well with her being black so um it goes through a lot of that as well a lot of people not expecting her to have a white dad and her feeling like she's not black enough because she's um what she hates is the term of half caste she hates that term um so her not feeling like she's black enough she doesn't fit in either way with the white community or the black community and just going through that as well there is a lot of things going on in here and i do think that sort of representation and stuff was done very very well but obviously i can't say as a as a white person i can't say whether that representation representation was done well but i just think that i personally i think it was done well but obviously go and check out own voices reviews for this but i had a really really good time with this book other than dipping out of, in and out of feeling like it was a YA. But otherwise, I had a great time with it. Four out of five stars. It was good. So, I had some really good reads there. I found my favourite book of the year. I found my third favourite book of the year. <laughs> it was a great time. I had a really good start to the month, I think. I would have liked to have read a bit more. But overall, I've had a good start to the month. And I'm happy with how I've got on. So, whatever. 
<laughs> it's fine. Um, but yeah, I hope you have enjoyed this video. Please let me know in the comments down below if you've read any of these and what your thoughts were on them. Or let me know in the comments down below if you're going to pick up any of these books because I've recommended them. Um, I always love finding that out. Especially if you then read the book and you really enjoyed it. Please let me know if that's the case as well. And I shall hopefully see you next time. Bye for now.